Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast, lesson 9-5, Compare and Order Fractions and Mixed Numbers. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by Jackie Robinson. He said, a life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. And that doesn't mean you have to do something you don't love. Jackie Robinson played baseball. He was the first African-American to play major league baseball. And uh, it wasn't always easy for him. He faced some really tough, challenging stuff that a lot of people might give up after facing. But uh, he didn't give up, and he opened the door for um, African Americans to excel and play baseball all over the country. So um, his impact on the lives of others uh, came at cost to himself, but it really was something that he loved doing. So you can excel at something you love doing too and still impact other people around you. Our learning goal today is to use math strategies to compare and order fractions and mix numbers. Here's our individual lesson learning goals. The, I'm, also, I'm going to teach you to cross multiply to compare two fractions. I'm also going to teach you how to convert to common denominators, but uh, I want to make sure you know how to cross multiply. That's my number one goal. Um, we're going to use whole numbers to compare fractions and mix numbers, and we're going to use our knowledge of fractions and the size of fractions to order several fractions and mix numbers. Here's our vocabulary. Remember, and if you remember nothing else from this lesson but this, this is so important that you understand that a fraction represents an amount that is greater than zero and less than one whole. Always. It's always going to fall between zero and one. Here's our first example. We're going to do two examples here. So to the first way I'm going to teach you to compare two six and three eighths is to cross multiply. So we always start with our denominator, and we're going to start with the denominator on the left-hand side, and we're going to multiply it up across to the other numerator. So 6 times 3 is 18. Write that right at the top, and then circle it, because I don't want you to get it mixed up with your fraction numbers. Then we start with our other denominator, the denominator on the right. Multiply it up across. See how I've made a nice little cross multiplication symbol there in the middle? 8 times 2 is 16. And whichever one of those is greater, or if they were equal, you put an equal sign, you're going to remember have put the symbol that has the alligator opening its mouth to the greater number. Now when we read this, it would be 16 is less than 18. We always read from left to right. We still need to put our symbol down here between our fractions, and we've got our cross multiplication symbol in the middle, so we could either rewrite our fraction to make it really neat, or we can put our symbol right here. 2 sixths is less than 3 eighths. And I'm going to be ordering these from least to greatest. So on my paper, I always put a capital L and an arrow and a capital G. And I do this because when I'm done ordering these, I want to go back and make sure that I really put them in order from least to greatest. One of the most common mistakes that fifth graders make is to put them in the right order. They order them correctly except backwards. So maybe in this case, they would order them from greatest to least. If you know the strategy for ordering, you definitely don't want to make a mistake by just being sloppy and least to greatest or greatest to least. So write that strategy, write that least to greatest right there on your paper. Now some of these, I don't need to cross multiply, and let's take a look why. Half of three is what? That's right, 1.5. Two is greater than 1.5, so we know that two thirds is greater than one half. Half of five is 2.5, or two and a half. So we know four fifths is also greater than half. Half of four would be two, so half of one four, or excuse me, half of four fourths is two fourths. This fraction right here is less than one half, so we know this is gonna be our smallest fraction. You can cross multiply if you don't trust me, but, or if you don't trust your own judgment, but we know that 1 fourth is the smallest fraction here. It's the only fraction that represents an amount less than 1 half. So I'm going to put a circle around this because I have already used it. I'm now comparing these two fractions. Both of them will come after 1 fourth. So I'm going to cross multiply. If you want to practice coming up with a common denominator, I think that would be great. You'll know that you did it correctly if you come up with these numerators. We're going to start here on the bottom left. 3 times 4 is 12. Circle it. And 5 times 2 is 10. 12 is greater than 10, so I know 4 fifths is greater than 2 thirds. So when I order them, 
I'll write two thirds and then I'll write four fifths. When you're in doubt, check it out. So you can always check it out by cross multiplying. If you have four fractions to compare, cross multiplication becomes a little bit more technical. You have to really think about what you're doing, but it can still be done. It's just a little bit more time consuming. So here's the first set of fractions that I want you to compare. In this case, if we look at them just common sense wise, they're both representing amounts less than one half. Um, so we're gonna need to cross multiply to make sure we know how to do this. Um, go ahead and pause it, push play till you've finished, and then come back to me to check your answer. Good, let's see what you got here. Let's go ahead and work this out. We're gonna cross multiply. So three times five is 15. And by the way, the closer these numbers are at the top, the closer in size these fractions are to each other. Now we go to our next denominator. 12 times one is 12. Always start at the bottom and multiply up and across, up and across, and write your answer at the top. So 15 is greater than 12. So as we're writing our sentence down here, we would say one third is less than five twelfths. So that's the symbol you should have used. Let's try another one. Let's go to a different color. Number two. Let's do four fifths and compare it to six sevenths. Now this is hard. Both of these fractions are greater than one half. We know that because half of five is two and a half. Four is greater than two and a half. Half of seven is three and a half and six is greater than three and a half. But this, since the numerator is only one away from the denominator, it does make it hard to see which one is greater. So go ahead and use your strategies, pause and push play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, so we're gonna cross multiply these. I'm doing my cross multiplication symbol in the middle. Five times six is 30, circle it. Seven times four is 28. Cross multiplying is a lot of fun, especially if you understand what these numbers represent. 30 is greater than 28, so again, we're using that same symbol. Four fifths is less than six sevenths. If the opposite were true, remember our symbol would go the other direction. This number like three is greater than one. So it reads the same way. Three is greater than one. Four fifths is less than six sevenths. And remember, an equal symbol, you know what that looks like. Okay, now we're gonna do some ordering. Let's do red for number three. We are going to compare two and five twelfths. Write these down as I do. Eleven twelfths. 3 and 1 sixth and 2 and 1 third and the most important piece of information we need is are we comparing are we listing these in order from greatest to least or least to greatest and we are going to list them from greatest to least and then at the end if I forget to go back and check I want you to put an exclamation part and point and write it down and I'll do a push-up for you tomorrow so as we're comparing these four fractions, we've got three mixed numbers. That means three of these fractions have whole numbers. So first thing we're gonna do is look and find, are any of those whole numbers different? And they are. Three is greater than either of these twos. Three is our greatest fraction. We're gonna put number one. That's the first one we're gonna list in our answer. Now we have to compare these two. The twos are the same. The whole number two is the same. So we're comparing the fraction. And as we compare 5 twelfths and 1 third, they're both less than half. So I'm gonna cross multiply to make it easier. I'm working this problem without letting you work it. So pause it right now, go ahead and work it, and push play and we'll go over the rest of it. I always do that on the bamboo tablet. Figure out the rest of it and we'll come back. Okay, now we'll finish working this problem. 12 times one is 12. 
3 times 5 is 15 and always leave all of this work right on your paper next to the problem that you're working so that if you make a mistake I can figure out where you made it and you can go back and figure out where you made it. 15 is greater than 12 so 5 twelfths is greater than 1 third. That means this number 2 and 5 twelfths is going to be greater than 2 and 1 third so this is going to be number 2 this is going to be number three, and then our fraction, which is less than one, is going to be number four. So let's list them in order from greatest to least. Three and one six. I'm even gonna preface this. I'm gonna rewrite this on my answer page. Three and one six, here's number two. Two and five twelfths. Number three, two and one third. They were pretty close though and 11 twelfths. We know that had to be our smallest fraction because it's less than one and all of these are greater. We've got two here, that's greater than one, and three is definitely greater than one. So now I'm gonna go back and check. Did I put the biggest one first, the greatest one first? Did I end up with the smallest one? I did, so I think I'm done. So now we're gonna practice some word problems. Let's see. Mr. Waltz baked 324 cupcakes. Can you imagine that, Mr. Waltz baking 324 cupcakes? I think Mrs. Waltz might have to help him. Mr. Perkins ate one-fifth of the cupcakes. Mr. Coder ate three-eighths of the cupcakes. Mr. Waltz ate two-sevenths of the cupcakes. Order your teachers by who ate the greatest amount of cupcakes to who ate the least amount of cupcakes. So you're gonna use those strategies we just used in that last practice problem. Pause and push play when you're ready. Did you write in this order from greatest to least, Mr. Coder, who ate the most cupcakes, Mr. Waltz, who ate the middle amount of cupcakes, and then Mr. Perkins, who ate the least amount of cupcakes? Let's see how we did that. I'm gonna start with Mr. Perkins and Mr. Coder. Now, five times three is 15. Eight times one is eight. Wow, there's a big difference in the amount of cupcakes that Mr. Coder ate. He ate a lot more than Mr. Perkins. Let's now cross multiply between these two just to see who ate more here. Now, I can't use this same number, so I'm gonna just kind of, I'm gonna ignore this. I don't know how to, I could put a little, I'm gonna put a little line over it because we're not gonna look at that for this one. So when I cross multiply these two fractions, eight times two is 16, and seven times three is 21. Mr. Coder ate more than Mr. Waltz too. So we know that Mr. Coder ate the greatest amount of cupcakes. Now, we were listing these, we should have written it down first, greatest to least. So we're gonna put Mr. Coder first, three eighths, I'm gonna put a K below it. We need to know that's Mr. Coder. And then I need to know which is bigger. We can't just compare this eight and this 16. I always have to actually compare the two fractions directly. So I'm gonna write one fifths and two sevenths. There's Mr. Waltz, there's Mr. Perkins. And now I'm gonna cross multiply these two. Do you see how careful I am not to use the numerator from the previous cross multiplication problem? That'll cause you problems. 5 times 2 is 10, and 7 times 1 is 7. So Mr. Perkins ate less than Mr. Waltz. So if I'm listing them from greatest to least, I'm going to put Mr. Waltz next, and Mr. Perkins last. Now, did they ask me to list the fractional amount or the teachers? And it says, order your teachers. It's okay to write it out. It's a word problem, so really your best answer is going to be written out in words. It's time to challenge yourself. You're going to place the numbers below in order from least to greatest. Start by expressing each number as a fraction or mixed number. Some of these are improper fractions, so think about that. Express each of them as a fraction or a mixed number. Show all of your work in your flip journal and come back tomorrow. We're going to go over it together in class. Finishing up, 
Is there anything you don't understand still? Is there anything you'd like to go over more? Maybe you liked finding those common denominators and you want a little bit more practice, I'd be glad to help you.